Hello, and thank you for taking the time to watch our FAST 15 webinar on trauma-informed care. Our goal is to provide a quick, brief overview of what trauma-informed care is, who trauma impacts, and how we can help ourselves and others who experience trauma in their lives. This is meant to be a resource for parents, teachers, and students not only during COVID-19, but also afterwards. COVID-19 has impacted almost every single person on this planet in some way or another. It has changed our routines, work practices, social interactions, and has caused instability in many lives around the world. School has previously been a constant in many children and family lives as our country and state have enforced statutes to try to keep Americans safe, this has significantly altered our daily routines. Some of the families we work with are experiencing job loss, financial difficulties, environmental stress, and uncertainty in these times. As adults who have relationships with children and families we serve, it is important to remember that everyone has a different background and a previous experience that they bring to this already difficult situation. Our ability to meet each person where they are is imperative. Some of you that are listening to this presentation may have personally been impacted by trauma. Please know that there are people out there that are willing and able to help and support. At the end of this presentation, additional resources will be provided to help with that support. When we talk about trauma, there are generally four main types that we need to consider. Chronic trauma is something that's happened over an extended period of time. This could be ongoing abuse or neglect, violence, a long-term illness, or maybe exposure to poverty and deprivation. Historical trauma is usually experienced by a particular group across generations. Examples of this would be slavery, racism, discrimination. Acute trauma usually occurs at a particular time and place and is often not expected to go on for a long duration. COVID-19 is an example of an acute trauma as we do expect this to end at some point. It could also include natural disasters, an accident, or a one-time experience with violence. Complex trauma is usually something that begins early in life and often has to do with the caregivers that are in our lives. This could be due to neglect, violence, or maybe stress experienced because there is not an adult caregiver. No matter what trauma is being talked about, it is important to remember that we usually are unable to identify who has experienced trauma or if they've experienced different types of trauma. Trauma impacts everyone, no matter their gender, race, ethnicity, religious affiliation, or other unique backgrounds. As always, we want to be aware of how our speech and thoughts should honor individuals for who they are. America is a great nation to live in because of the diversity that it encompasses. Knowing that individuals of all backgrounds may have previous or current trauma due to life situations we need to model compassion and seek to build relationships with others. For all of us to get through COVID-19, the social distancing and public closures, we need to do this together by supporting one another. This can be done by treating everyone with fairness, respect, and dignity. Adults can model compassion so that children can have good role models and examples to take cues from. We need to make sure we are avoiding negative statements based on race, ethnicity, 
or religious affiliation. And even though we are social distancing, we need to remember how important it is to connect with our neighbors and colleagues, especially ones that might feel at risk due to their ethnicity or other traits. And as always, we should seek to build positive relationships with those around us. Trauma can impact children and adults in many ways. It can greatly reduce our ability to handle situations that we would otherwise be able to address. It can interfere with our ability to cope with stress or anxiety and make some situations feel overwhelming. It can bring about feelings of fear and helplessness and can reduce our ability to make changes or feel empowered in situations. This can lead to impacting the way we build relationships, connect with others, and find meaning in the interactions we have with others. Please take a moment to think about how fear of a loved one's health, losing a job, not having a paycheck, not being able to pay rent, or maybe just a strained relationship could greatly be impacted by the effects of trauma. Trauma impacts a lot of people in our country. Research shows that nearly 35 million children have experienced at least one event that could lead to childhood trauma. Over two thirds of children and youth in our country have experienced at least one stressful event, including witness of domestic violence, sexual, physical, emotional abuse, suffering serious injuries, or the death of a loved one before the age of 18. A study that was completed a while ago called the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study, better known as ACEs, shows that how trauma can impact people and their physical health. It also shows that the more types of trauma a person has experienced, the greater that health can be impacted. For more information on the ACEs study, please see the resources at the end of this presentation. Trauma is impactful and devastating, but that does not mean there is nothing we can do. We can change the lens in which we view the cause of behaviors, how we manage feelings, demonstrate effective strategies, our response and how we would choose to respond. We can provide people with a safe place that's friendly, encouraging and positive that will lessen the potential impact trauma can have. Specifically, we can also be sensitive to how children manage and cope with their feelings. During times of tragedy and events like COVID-19, we can answer children's questions with honesty and then it's also important to know that we can engage them in activities that are good for their mind and for development and can also reduce some of the worry that they may carry. In addition to being warm and caring, consistency and structure are key. It's important that there are expectations and boundaries that have consistency, but also have that we have patience with those that we're working with. Providing choices to students, encouraging them and supporting them. We need to anticipate challenging times and provide additional support when needed. Providing children alternative opportunities to reflect energy that they may have by giving them additional responsibility or leadership roles is also key. Stress is a re 
reaction of mind and body to particular unsettling experience. COVID-19 and the situation that we are experiencing in our state and across the country, I believe qualifies as an unsettling experience for most. This is likely to bring additional stress into the homes and the homes of the children that we work with. It's important to remember that parents can pass their anxiety and fear to their children. And so we need to be aware of our children's emotional needs. Children of different ages are often have different reactions to that type of stress. It's important for us to understand that everyone may not respond the same way to stress and that we allow a safe place for those responses. Most common will see fear and anxiety, but there could be disturbances with sleep, loss of interest in school or peers. We may see regressions in behavior or maybe regressions in development. There could be unusual fears of separation or being alone. There could be semantic complaints, including headaches and stomach aches. It's important that we're mindful of our kids and respond to them appropriately. Having positive relationships is another key component to the success of our kids. Again, since we do not know who has what experiences in their life, it is best to use a lens of understanding and acceptance with our students while holding them to a high standard to learn and grow at each of their ability levels. By investing in the students that we work with, we need to make consistent deposits where we're asking and learning about them so that when those times come that there's a crisis or a need, we're able to draw on those previous deposits that we've made. Research shows that positive relationships between teachers and students is a great predictor of academic su success and classroom engagement. Our students are smart. They know when people care about them. Relationships are important and important for problem solving success. Engaging in problem solving without previous positive relationships can often lead to reduced outcomes. It is important that we remember that we are all humans first. Academics and education are important, but there are often other needs that need to be met before our children are going to be ready to engage in learning. If there are concerns about basic needs, including food, shelter, clothing, Students may not be available for learning. We need to take time to connect and engage with students in conversations about their lives, how they're feeling, and what they're going through. If we have previous positive relationships with them, we may be able to ask questions and learn more about what they're experiencing. Active listening by checking for understanding, asking clarifying questions and affirming statements that students make are often able are often ways that we are able to relate to them in certain situations it is also important to understand how we can support students and their families basic needs and resources are always a priority sometimes just being present or checking in can go a long way Connecting families with community resources may alleviate stress and provide needed support. Scheduling consistent contact via phone, video conferencing, or doing email check-ins can also let them know that we care. Providing virtual opportunities to see their classmates, connect with peers, and share their experiences can also help normalize the situation. Passing along professional literature that provides information and training may also be helpful for families. There's a lot that we can do to help support our school districts. First, we can talk with administrators and department leads about what those needs may be. We can help develop mental health plans to support students, families, and teachers deal with these difficult situations. 
we can work with our teachers and counselors to identify students that may be at the most risk. We can help make contact and connections with our families. We can reach out to teachers, determine needs, create chat rooms, or provide one-on-one -on -one support. We can consult with them if there are any academic ideas or if they just need someone to brainstorm with. We can assist administration with reunification plans when school resumes and how we might bring some of these students back into a stressful situation and lessen that impact for them. We may also come together with teams to set up curriculum to help students catch up when they return to school. This slide has some additional resources, including work by Dr. Bruce Perry in the Child Trauma Academy. Dr. Perry looks at how the brain develops and how trauma can impact that development. The National Association of School Psychology also came up with some resources during this COVID-19 pandemic. As previously mentioned, there is some additional information on the ACEs and also some additional toll-free numbers to help with certain situations. Here are a few video resources that may be beneficial and provide some additional information. Again, we want to remind everyone that we are all going through something together and that we want to help one another as much as we can. It's important to know that you don't have to have all the answers and there are others out there that can help support, that want to advocate for kids and their families and help them through these difficult times. We thank you for all the work you do with our students and hope that you found this webinar beneficial. Thank you and have a good day.